Hey guys. Okay, so today I am actually getting started with, well, I started last night, I'm going to walk you through some of that, but I needed cement to dry. Anyway, I'm getting started on my tomato trellis here at our new homestead, and I'm going to take you through step by step on the process of building it. And this is the first time I've had an opportunity to do that on this channel, because uh, when I started my channel several years ago, I already had my trellis built. But I've used it in several videos and kind of verbally walked you through it. And I know a lot of you have not only copied my trellis, uh, some of you have embellished up on it. And I'm going to be showing some of those at the end of the video. But bottom line is this way of growing tomatoes is going to allow you to grow a lot more tomatoes in a lot less space. So this bed here will be about 16 feet by three. And that's going to allow me to grow about 30 tomato plants in that small little area. So if you're looking to do that, stick around. So in order to know kind of how this kind of an overview of how this works and what you're going to get out of it, we need to go back in time a little bit to when I actually was growing tomatoes on a trellis like this. So I'm going to show you some video of me kind of walking you through the benefits of this. And then we're going to come back and we're going to build the trellis step by step. It is almost the middle of December. Can't believe it. But I have tomatoes that are still going strong. Let me show you something. This was today's harvest. A basket full of San Marzano's and some Kellogg's breakfast. In mid-December. Now the reason is um, I have been using this year the tomato hooks that I've been talking about for a year now. And that has given me some extremely long tomato vines. Let's go take a closer look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So just from the, the, the bed level to the top of the trellis is about seven-ish feet, about seven feet, a little less. So that would only get me a few months worth of growth. And we talked about this. At, when it gets to the top, you need to like cut them off because what's going to happen is the top of the tomatoes will kind of just bend over and start breaking off. But with the hooks, you're able to extend that growing season indefinitely, depending on your weather. But let me show you, try to explain how this is working. So when we first start, so instead of growing the plants straight up to the top, well, we do do that. But when it reaches the top, we move the hooks over. So this one here has reached the top, right? Several times. It's, it started back over here and has grown around the structure and up. So what we do is we take each one and move it to the next hook. And if you have to unwind the string, like on this one, I'll have to unwind it once. It now goes to the next one and then so on and so forth all the way across. And eventually what you have is this, let's say there was one plant in here and it just winds its way around this entire bed as many times as it needs to until the frost kills it or I take it out. So you can see down here, we have one that starts over here and it grows around and back up and almost about one and a half times around this trellis. You can see all of the, the vines because we do single stem them. We cut off all the side branches, right? And if you've been with me for any length of time, you know, I've showed you how to do that and I will continue to. But you can see we still have tomatoes coming on. We still have ripe tomatoes, we still have ripening tomatoes, and we still have baby tomatoes and even flowers. But I'm going to guess, and I don't have a flexible type of um, tape measure, but I'm going to guess that the longest vine I have in here is probably 16 feet. So if you imagine a 16 foot tall trellis, you'd never reach the top of it, but it goes around and around. So I get a 16 foot plant and I've got about 20 plants 
in this bed, which is three feet by nine feet. And because of the way we grow them, you can fit a lot more tomatoes in to a smaller space with these hooks. Now, when you have a harvest like this in mid-December, that is crazy. Uh, did anybody else notice something weird there? That's kind of awkward and embarrassing. I had the exact same two shirts on as I did back then. Anyway, let's get started. So last night, um, we set these two beds in and uh, they're just two by six uh, lumber uh, screwed together with some galvanized hardware cloth stapled to the bottom to keep the gophers out. And then what I did was in the middle of each bed on the end of each of the beds, just dug a hole about 10 inches deep to put the four by four posts in. Now, I am actually making this trellis a bit larger, stronger than our previous one that you just saw. The reason is, is because this is a much grander space and we just had a tiny little spot at our last house for this. This is going to be a much bigger spot with a lot more tomatoes, a lot more weight, but I will let you know of the lumber differences. If you want to go, if you have a small space and want to go back and do it like I did the first one, I'll let you know each time I mention lumber, unless I forget. So we buried about 10 inches of the four, the four by fours or in my last one, I had two by fours, about 10 inches in the ground, put a little bit of cement on the bottom of the hole just to protect it from the soil down there. Put the post in, leveled it. You're gonna need some help with that. I had Noah and Emily helping me. And then I screwed it to the wood of the raised bed to make sure we got that level perfect and it stayed perfect. Then I went ahead and filled the hole with some quick setting cement. You can put it in dry up to the top of the hole, like right right above soil level. Uh, and then I built a little berm of soil around that and filled that with water and filled it several times to let it percolate down through that quick set cement. And now this morning, perfectly, perfectly strong, not only hooked to the bed with screws, but protected and even more stabilized with cement in the ground. So we've got the beds, and we've got the uprights. Now we actually need to build the trellis structure at the top. So I'm gonna start cutting some lumber and then I'll be back with all of the pieces and kind of show you how it all fits together. And in the end, we're gonna have a finished product and I'll be ready to plant my tomatoes and get them strung. But that'll be on another video. So on my old trellis at our last house, I had two by fours going upright and another two by four across the top. Here, I've got four by fours and I'm gonna do two two by fours sandwiching those in across the top, mainly for aesthetics, not necessarily for strength. All right, so the cross pieces are on. Again, those are two by fours. And now I've got two by threes. Um, I'm not sure if these are available everywhere. They are at Home Depot and Lowe's. Now on my old one, I used furring strips, which is basically a three quarter inch by one and a half to two inch strip. Uh, you can find those at pretty much any hardware store as well. And they did hold up for well, three years at least, they could still be going strong. I don't know, haven't been there this year to see, but um, this is gonna give just a little bit more of an aesthetic, better aesthetic look. Um, it's not gonna look so spindly on top of all of these bigger pieces now that these are larger. Um, so I've marked where the center is, so I'll know when we place them. I've got two marks. Uh, I'll know where to place them up there. So now comes the math part, which is always my least favorite, measuring. So th these are what the uh, string will be going up. So every foot, because I'm going to plant my tomatoes a foot apart, needs to be one of these. But they don't start right on the edge, so I need to move them in a little bit and then make sure they're equidistant all the way across. Wish me luck.
All right, so wanted to give you a long shot and uh, it looks odd right now. However, we will be adding another eight foot bed, just like those. And one more post that'll be, you know, right there, same distance as the rest. And then that will continue on across and end just like that other side. So the only thing left to do now is to screw in the screw eyes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one per little bar that comes out. We're gonna put it about halfway between the main support and the end of that two by three. This is where the hooks will be hanging. And you just wanna make sure that it's gonna be straight above where the tomato plant will be growing. Kind of cool because it's something here now at the new house that reminds me of the old house. I'm going to put up some more um, pictures of viewers just like you who built my system or a variation of it at the end. But if you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up, please. Make sure you're subscribed. The hooks are back in stock on our website, uh, nextlevelgardening.tv. So if you want to do this and you need the hooks, Best place to get them on our website, and as far as I know, the best quality and the best price because I made sure of that uh, before we brought them on. And if you've been with me that long, you know it took me a long time to source them. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time.